Welcome back to Picks Insight for Absolute Beginners. In part one, we talked about creating some icons for ourselves, ones that would be in order of use, starting from cropping down to curved, which I had a hard time finding. But guess what? I know where it is now. Process, all process, and of course, it's curved transformation. But I created it over here, so I no longer have to chase for it. And I thought that was funny. Excuse me. <clears throat> so today, for part two, we are going to do what we're going to be doing or looking at is the blink module. And uh, it is under process, all process and blink. This particular module, you cannot drag onto the desktop and make an icon. But that's fine, and a lot of them are like that. They're just used as is. So why blink all our subs? Many, many reasons. Perhaps the most common is um, you're out last night, and it was a clear night, and you shot 30 times, five minutes, and three jetliners went right down the middle of your camera, your scope. And so you have trails or there was 150 satellites and three of those went right through your frame either on the edge the middle center or there was a gamma ray burst which made a big blob or a curve on on your image so or some clouds went by for a few minutes and uh, it ruined you know two three frames or so so Blink will allow us to bring all these subs, frames, into this main window. And we're going to go through them one at a time and see if anything is out of balance. So our darks, not our darks, but the sky should be dark. It should be clear. There should be no planes or, or, or satellite trails going through it or clouds or any anomaly that just you don't want to stack. You know the saying? Garbage in, garbage out. This is what we're trying to avoid. So we're going to go. I have a few pictures here taken with a T3i. And it's the Owl Nebula. So we're going to go find them on my terabyte. And it's under backup, M97 Owl. And here they are. They're CR2. So they're raw, not debared. There's going to be no color. So you can just scroll and select them all. And open them up. And as you can see, PixInsight's loading each one of them. It recognizes it's an EOS Rebel T3i, shows the size of the file, 52 by 4600 pixels. I think it's 18 megapixels. It shows it as 181 seconds, so just over three minutes, ISO 800. And it's applying the debayering, not the debayering, sorry. It's applying uh, the, uh, the raw, invoking DC raw, which is up here. All these numbers here, one 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 D T O K O H one. I have no idea what it means, but PixInsight understands where the pictures came from and what format they should be. And in this case, they're all grayscale because they're CR twos and they're, they're raw files. So here's the Owl Nebula. One thing that PixInsight did is it automatically stretched this image. In fact, it stretched all of them. And there's only 10, 10 or 12 frames here. Imagine if you had 30 or 40, and there were 40 meg each. This window here would have took, you know, sometimes it can take up to 10 or 15 minutes to load all 50 frames. I just chose a few to get to the point. So we look at our frames, and there's a couple of things you can do here. You can click on them manually. As you can see, the, the owl, the, the stars are moving back and forth, so there was dithering. So we go back to the top. Or you can use the arrow, down, down, down. That's kind of cool, back to the top. Or you could play a little video, like you can set it for three quarters of a second, hit play, and just watch it go through. There you go, the stars are jumping, the owl is moving around. Perfect. All right, back to the top. So I'm going to use the arrow, and I'm going to look at my frame uh, as I'm going along, and I'm looking for something as did a jet go by, or an airliner, or uh, a satellite, or uh, a gamma ray burst, or, or something, or maybe a meteorite. 
uh, maybe one that come right at you or one that's that went across which is kind of neat so I'm gonna go next go through all of them four five six seven eight sorry seven nine one oh here we go this um, this particular frame <coughs> excuse me the clouds came in and so if we add this to our other frames then we're gonna be, we're gonna be washing out the nebula so we want to keep all the nice dark ones which are all these if we just go back and forth top and then back to the bottom so we want to remove this and I really like this the blink module because there's a way to do it without having to go down here and look for the file and scroll all the way down like the old days and go to M97 and then go into the folder and say oh this is frame one so you could go here you could go details and move this over a bit and frame one according to this okay this says 300 seconds okay maybe they're the ones in front here hold on a second this happens a lot to me okay I was right so 300 seconds frame one is right here this you could you could right click here and go delete right you could it's it's doable because you you, know, you have the the results right here how bad it is but instead what you can do inside without ever leaving pixel inside is it's already selected and down here it says if you hover over this little folder with an arrow and showing a subframe move selected files to a new location so me I just uncheck it but I leave it orange I select that it goes back to M97 OWL I'll create a new folder and just say junk and because you could have 60 frames and 8 are bad so you want to keep putting them in this folder so it has to say junk select folder so if I go back in this folder now using Windows or or down here whichever I should have a folder and that frame 1 300 seconds has been now put away from here and if you go down the list they're all 180 seconds and the 300 or 5 minutes is here in the junk folder now you can you know grab these and do your calibration or your stacking or registration and you've removed that particular frame which was not good because it was getting cloudy out and so that's how informative and how nice and convenient the blink program is and that's just uh, it's it's just so convenient I, I, just, I can't get I, I really like this I used to do this in nebulosity 3 where I used to blink each file one by one um, and you could you could name it like there would be a naming convention for example bad underscore ISO 800 to 180 seconds frame 9 but then you would go back to that folder and you would just not select them but here PixInsight lets you grab that file or 10 files and just continue to say I don't like that one so I'm gonna send it to, I'm gonna move it to another location and uh, that's really nice I like that another thing sometimes I do so I'll just speed this up a little bit go back to the top and I'll just run it fairly fast and I'm just gonna keep letting it run just keep letting it run and I'm looking for you know is there like uh, anything else happening in all these pictures I'm watching the dithering which everything was nice so that's it I'll stop it there and that is a shorter video how to simply use the blink program for those who are just starting out and you want to look at them first you want to look at them analyze them and there's a reason why you want to blink first and the next video I'm going to do is is going to be um, the script and it's going to be under subframe selector and this is even better and greater than blink but it just does a completely different thing we're gonna analyze each frame each sub and we're gonna look at their quality of course that's after you remove the bad ones and I'm gonna say something in a minute about the bad ones 
and this is a really nice module to learn. I'm going to do that. Like I said, my videos, I want to try to keep them short, just deal with one module, even if I have to do, you know, 15 videos. So this is part two. Blink, don't blink. Uh, if you blink, you'll miss something, but this is a beautiful program called Blink, and uh, I found it very, very useful. I can't live without it. I have to blink all my subframes when they come in from the outside. I'll go through them all, uh, and I will look for anomalies uh, and, and things like that. Now, right away, somebody's going to say, wait a minute. There was a jet that went through frame 10, but I know for a fact that PixInsight can remove any airplanes, any airliners, any satellites. I agree. I didn't say no. Um, I go through my frames and I remove the ones that are very bad. Sometimes I've left some in because they're long. Five minutes is a long time to throw away one frame, but I usually shoot with my new camera. I now shoot 30 seconds, 45 seconds, one minute. And so I can get two, 300 frames instead of only 12, 24, 36, which is a, it's hard to throw away one 10 minute sub if you're doing deep sky imaging. So don't miss the purpose of the blink. Is to remove bad frames, clouds, uh, haze, uh, passing chemtrail. I don't think Pink Sense is going to try to remove all that haze and that, and that gradient. So it's good. I really like it. If we go back here, even though it's completely removed and it's been tossed to another folder, it still shows it. But you can see you don't want this in here. You want that one because it has a nice dark background. Of course, it's even better as you start the night. And hopefully you found this useful. Again, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to tell your friends, and I will see you on part three, where we will be doing using the script for analyzing subframes, which is very interesting. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. Hope you had fun. I did. See you in part three. Thank you.